one of the great things about Linux is all of our drivers are shipped with the kernel. Except when they're not and need to be loaded as alpha tree modules. Things like the NVIDIA drivers, v 4 l 2 loopback for doing virtual cameras, binder Linux for Wagerroid, or maybe there is a module in the tree, but for whatever reason, you don't want to be using that one. Say for example, you're using open tablet driver instead of the in-tree Wacom driver, or maybe your distro ships some additional modules that you don't want to have running on your system. For whatever reason, at least a couple of times you have probably run the command modprobe. This program's been around for about 20 or so years, and it's taken until the current year with the release of KMod31 to implement a very, very basic developer feature. Allow passing a path to modprobe so the module is loaded from anywhere from the file system, but still handling the module dependencies recorded in the indexes. This is mostly intended for kernel developers to speed up testing their kernel modules without having to load the dependencies manually or override the module in user lib modules. Now it's possible to do modprobe and not the name of the module in this location, but the path to the file, and this path can be anywhere on your file system. Why am I excited about this? Well, this is something that you couldn't do before. Normally when you develop a program, say you're developing in C for example, you do all your code typing, you write the code up, you get to a point where you're like, hey, I want to test that things are working like they should be. So you compile the code, and then you run it from the developer directory. There's no fiddling around, moving it to different places on your file system. You just run the program, and it runs. And now you can use modprobe to do exactly that with a kernel module, the thing that any sensible developer tool would have let you done years and years ago. Now, as to be expected, I have seen a couple of people arguing about the possible security implications of this. What if, for example, you download a malicious script? and this script downloads a malicious kernel module, and now because of this update, it can load that module into the kernel right from your home directory. Or what if you go and download a malicious module yourself, and then following some random guide on the internet, you load that module into the kernel without doing the additional things of moving it into the right location. But here's the thing, you still need root access to load a module into the kernel. You can load it from your home directory, but only someone with root privileges can actually load it. So if you give some random script off the internet root access, that's a you problem. Also, if you gave a script that wanted to load a kernel module root access, it could already do that without this change being made. Like, developers can already load a kernel module, it just needed to go in a set location. So pretty much the only thing that would have changed here is there is basically one less step that needs to be taken to make that loading actually possible. If you give some random script off the internet root access, it's basically game over then. But there is another reason why I think there are basically zero security implications. That reason is INS mod. Most often you as a regular user are going to be loading modules making use of mod probe, but INS mod or insert mod is also within the kmod project. So unless your distro is modifying that package, both these tools are probably going to be on your system. So here is what modprobe does. Modprobe, program to add and remove modules from the Linux kernel. INS mod, simple program to insert a module into the Linux kernel. Minus the removing part, these sound exactly the same. And that's because the short description doesn't do a very good job at distinguishing them. We'll start with modprobe. So modprobe, much like your package manager does for a package, it understands the dependencies of that module and will attempt to do dependency resolution. So a module isn't just a standalone thing. A lot of the time there are going to be additional things that need to be loaded to make sure that module can actually do what it needs to do. And modprobe is going to attempt to automatically load and unload those things alongside loading this module. Now as for INS mod, this is a much, much simpler tool. If you say load module x, it will attempt to load module x. 
It doesn't matter. The module X might be dependent on module A, B, and C. That is outside of the scope of INS mod. If you want to load those modules as well, they should be individually loaded alongside all of their possible dependencies. So with INS mod, you can theoretically replicate the dependency resolution of mod probe. But unlike mod probe where it's doing it automatically based on the module, INS mod you'd have to do it in a more manual fashion on a module per module basis. But depending on your use case, maybe that is something that you want to do. For whatever reason, maybe mod probe isn't doing what you need to do. Maybe there are additional things you need to do alongside that. For whatever the reason, INS mod has always been there, and INS mod has always had the ability to load a kernel module from anywhere on your system. So, the only thing that's changing here is mod probe is just being made in line with the other program that already existed. So I don't see a security problem there. Maybe someone does, but I don't see it at all. Maybe. Just maybe you could argue that making it slightly easier to load a kernel module that isn't in the correct location, possibly someone copying commands off the internet, makes it slightly easier for them to make a mistake and load a module that shouldn't be loaded, but I don't know how many people are really going to be loading random kernel modules that they didn't install just as a package. And maybe you could say that having more things to load a kernel module from anywhere on your system adds a higher, you know, surface area for bugs to occur. So maybe there could be some sort of privilege escalation issue that involves mod probe loading from an arbitrary path. And yeah, that could absolutely happen. But until that happens, I don't think it's really a concern that's super worth thinking about. But at the end of the day, though, I don't know why you watch this, because most of you are probably not Linux kernel module developers, and that is the only group that is actually being affected by this change. Most of you are probably just regular Linux users who are never going to just download a kernel module and have it in their home directory because any of the modules that you could reasonably need are going to be in your distro's package repo, and any sensible distro is going to put that module into the regular module location, the place that mod probe could already load the module without needing this arbitrary path feature. And look, maybe your random weird distro maintained by one guy you've never met is going to start putting modules in locations that are not the regular module location. But if they do that, you probably shouldn't be on the distro anyway, because I don't know what they're doing, they clearly have no idea how to maintain a distro. This is not something that's going to affect you, but for the developers out there, I'm glad you finally have it. So, let me know your thoughts down below. Are you a kernel module developer? Maybe you actually do exist in my community. I would love to know, and is this something you would actually find yourself using? Or do you think it's just a giant waste of time, and the solutions you already had, you've automated to the point where this is not really going to help? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video, and if you really liked the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to LiberaPay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and the aliens probed me.